Prophecy headlines. The burdensome stone, which should be on a lot of people's minds, considering what's going on in the Middle East right now. But that prophecy will end at some point very soon. So, this is the prophecy headlines for 19 May 2021. As always, I throw up you know, this slide to show you how close we are prophetically. You know, what needs to occur in the prophecy for Jesus Christ to rapture the church? Nothing else. What needs to occur to bring about that final period of time when the church ends and that age of the church that started at Pentecost will end with the rapture of the church and then we will proceed on into the next phase of your plan which is that seven year tribulation. All these things, milestones have been reached thus far. We'll discuss some of them tonight. Focusing uh, on Ezekiel 38 and 39 and how that folds into Zechariah 12, a powerful piece of prophecy. Uh, for we know we're inch stoning closer and closer and closer to that time of the end of the age in which you shall come from the shadows of the history. And we know you're all there. The Christians all know you're there, but the world doesn't know you're there. But they will, on that day, acknowledge you as Lord. The Gentile nations will see for who you are. So, with that, uh, we'll go further. Talk about the headlines of the day. Um, the bloody conflict between Israel and uh, the Gaza Islamists, who are the Iranian proxies, that continues. And there's no end in sight as of... You know, I, I checked at 4 o'clock. So it's still ongoing. Um, again, we discussed last week, Temple Mount is ground zero. Why? Because it is being struggled over between Satan and the, his forces and God and his plan for the redemption of mankind. But those prophecies we discussed last week, go back and look at them if you didn't. They're critical to our understanding of why this event occurred. But it was a rough week. We're in the eighth or ninth day, depending upon what part of the world you're in. I will read some of these uh, towards the end. Um, the IDF, that's Israeli Defense Force, announced earlier that 65 Hamas targets were hit in airstrikes overnight as Netanyahu vowed to continue striking the terrorists. A total of 212 Palestinians have been killed in the Gaza Strip, including horrifically 61 children since last Monday. Um, the IDF, uh, Israeli Defense Force, says that figure includes 120 members of Hamas and 25 members of the Palestinian, pa Palestinian Islamic Jihad. And 10 Israeli civilians have died, including a child, and they've been killed by the rocket attacks. Now I will point out here that Israel is not targeting children. What is happening instead is Hamas and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad are placing children in the areas where they have their military outposts, where they have their rocket sites, where they have their headquarters. They are literally sacrificing their children for headlines. Now what that reminded me of is if you go back into this land of Canaan, you will know that they sacrificed their children to Moloch when they were babies so they would be blessed and have what they want in their future. And I see that evil being perpetrated today in this similar event. Israel is doing all it can to warn them in advance they're going to blow these buildings up. But still, they put their children at those locations. So it's, it's just absolutely disgusting. The Palestinians... Um, or I should call them the Gaza Islamists, are pushing the holy sites again because those are triggers to the Muslim people. They are triggers to trigger the emotion, to get them fired up in uh, anti-Israel sentiment to be driven among them. So that's why the holy places are being used so that El Askamas and the Temple of the Dome are riots are intentionally portrayed there so they will provide excellent videos to go throughout the Muslim world. So this is a campaign of not just battles, but of thought. Here's another graphic I got today from uh, DailyMail.com, uh, which is a UK paper. 
They've got better news in the UK than they do in the United States because ours is just so full of political correctness. It just, you can't get the news, you get the spin. So anyway, I go there and uh, they have fairly straightforward news, but this is in keeping what's going on here. This Gaza battle and unrest in, in the Western Bank and this graphic shows all of these things that are going on and it's horrendous. If you've ever been under a rocket uh, attack, and I have, um, I was in Afghanistan for quite some time and you get shot at and then you just go, well, hopefully that one doesn't have my name on it because there's nothing much you can do about it besides hit the dirt and hope it doesn't hit you. So that is the life that they're under right now. And, and there has been over 3,000 rockets shot at Israel. It's not that the Israelis are bloodthirsty and looking for this conflict. The conflict came to them and they are just responding. Now, what does the burdensome stone prophecy say? And we'll read it in a bit. It says that anybody that goes up against Israel will be cut to pieces. And that's what we're seeing right now. The Gaza Islamists are being cut to pieces, including their children. And they're going to lose this battle, according to a Zechariah 12 prophecy, one, you know, one through three verses. And we'll read it in a bit. But are they going to win the media war? And they have been, for the last 30 years, winning the media war. Because Israel has been vilified. Israel has got a horrible name on an international stage by most of the world, but that's to be expected because Israel is the Adam, or excuse me, the apple of God's eye. So they will get all the attention of Satan who wants to wipe them out. And I believe a lot of the media is influenced by Satan because Satan is called the prince of the power of the air. And I think that means in part the airwaves. So he is putting out his media campaign against Israel for a purpose. Now here's where Israel stands down here. Um, this is uh, Israel's Gaza buying. Should they destroy Hamas or wait for the next war? Because that's what happens. Israel beats them down. They get a lot of press. They get what they want. They build up a bunch of rockets and do it all over again. And it's been that cycle for the last 20 years. So what is Israel to do? If you sat there in your town and got shot by, or country, you got shot by 3,000 rockets. I saw a Democrat a group today said, well, Israel is attacking back too strongly. What would you do? If someone's attacking you in your house, do you, you know, they're throwing rocks at you, do you sit there and say, stop that? No, you're going to do something about it. You're wanting it to stop. So Israel is sitting here going, what should we do now? Should we be on the borders and go in and completely wipe them out? Interestingly enough, they wiped out, like I said earlier, they've, they're wiping out the leadership. That's why they're in no rush to stop right now. They're taking out all the commanders that they can, while they can, by shooting rockets at them. And what do the commanders do? They hide behind children. And that's why that number is so high. And it's so, such a heinous act. So you have uh, a party within uh, Israel saying there's no return to the pre-war setup. They want to isolate and destroy Hamas. So this is the opportunity they're looking for. And this is why this is such a dicey thing for Israel to do. Is there a breaking point that they're going to reach media-wise that will take the world down upon them? Well, the world's reacting. You have Biden came to, uh, called up Netanyahu and said, wind down the bombardment of Gaza. And, you know, of course, who's he listening to? Um, oh, Tlaib over here. And she, I don't know if you saw this, she chewed Biden out for eight minutes up in Detroit at the airport, and he stood there and took it. And then afterward he said, oh, she's an intelligent, smart lady, and, you know, I've got to respect her and all this sort of thing. But they've got his ear, and they're driving his policy. And his policy right now is pro-Palestinian. So he is in a position where it's difficult for him because there is an extremely strong Israeli lobby in the United States. So he's going to try to play both ends of this. But the Israelis are not going to listen to him because they don't. Have, he does not have Israel's best interest in mind. Netanyahu 
uh, told him he was <laughs> said he was determined to continue Gaza operations despite pressure from Biden. So he is looking out for his people. Because again, Israel knows that if you don't take out care of yourself, someone is, you know, you're trusting someone else to take care of you. And they've got a long history that shows them that they can be put in a precarious quit, uh, position very quickly, even though they feel they are safe. Now, while this is all going, and this I'll do an exact quote because this is a good one from Netanyahu. I am sure that all the enemies around us see how costly it is to attack us. And I am sure they will learn the lesson. So he is playing strong, which they have to do. Because if you're weak, you will be rolled over in this part of the world. And again, some of the adversaries of Israel want to destroy them completely off the map. And considering the history of Israel, six million Jews killed, massacred, incinerated in the Holocaust in World War II, that is still a very raw thing that lives within them. We must defend ourselves. What's the rest of the world doing? I have here, uh, of course, there's Erdogan Togomarth of Ezekiel 38, 39, and he speaks and it says, Turkey's anti-Israel obsession reaches new heights. So again, he is one of those players, and he's speaking up. We already know what Iran feels, because they have the Hamas as one of their proxies. They give them the rocket technology and the rockets that they have to fire. They're the ones that are making them and acquiring them. What's Europe say? Macron extends support of Israel, urging return to peace. I love that. And... Uh, and he uh, is unwavering in his attachment for Israel's security. So he's the current EU figurehead, and he's speaking out. And as we know, as we studied the ten-toed kingdom that shall rise in the latter days out of the former Roman Empire, which is the EU, he may be, and I think he is the front runner for the Antichrist. So he is saying, return to peace. And I'm saying, that the lasting peace will only return when the Prince of Peace makes his enemies his footstool. And that doesn't happen until the end of the seven year tribulation when Jesus Christ returns in Revelation chapter 19 verses 11 through 21. Now according to Zechariah 12, 1 through 8, and we're going to read that prophecy, Israel is going to prevail in this battle. But it's my very humble opinion that the seeds are being sown even further for that Ezekiel 38, 39 word. I'll tell you why that is as we go through this prophecy. But someday we will see in Zechariah 12, 1 through 8, the protection will end. Right now when I hear anyone say that the burdensome stone is Israel, that is true. And the, the neighbors about them are shaking and quaking with, with rage and fury. But that period of time at some point will end. You never hear them say that, but we'll discuss it this evening. All right, I call this Beyond the Burdensome Stone Prophecy, chapter uh, Zechariah chapter 12. This is unfolding prophecy as well as pending prophecy.